First things first, this isn't pink, all right? It's rose. If anybody says nice pink vestment after mass, I'll be prompt to correct you. And it, usually guys only see about eight colors. You know, there's like a million shades of red, but it's all red to us. But just do me a favor and add rose to your color palette. So now you have nine colors, all right? So why do we wear rose on the third Sunday of Advent? We hear in the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, him speaking about joy. Those who suffer and struggle will receive their Savior, is the message. The desert and parched land will exult. He will strengthen the hands of the feeble, make firm the knees that are weak, and say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Contrary to popular belief, Advent is a penitential season, but it's not not in the same way as Lent is penitential. Advent is the season of restraint and waiting. Advent is... In Advent, we learn to hope for the Savior who has promised to come. So why do we wear rose? Because the promise of the Savior's coming, the one who we are awaiting, is close. It's almost fulfilled. And so the penitential waiting is almost over. And it's like the light of the dawn begins to break forth which lightens everything, including the vestments. So we're so close that we're nearly present with the Lord. He's nearly here. Spiritually, we are present with him. We're joyful now because the one whom we long for is almost here. It can be likened to children who are full of anticipated joy, just before opening their presents at Christmas, or the excitement that we have, especially children have, when they're about to see their friends or family coming down the road for a visit. They're not there yet. The presents aren't opened yet. The guests have not yet arrived. But the joy is there because they are almost present. They're almost there in such a way that it seems like they're there. The joy is there because we know that they're coming. We wear a rose today because our hope is so real that even though it is not Christmas yet, we experience the joy of knowing that the Savior Jesus Christ is coming and is almost here. So how do we live this joy? Or what if it is difficult to have that joy with all that's going on in our lives? Joy is a result of being in the presence of the one loved or seeing those whom we love receive what is good. So two things, two uh, words of advice to maintain this joy, to have this joy that the Lord wishes to pour into our hearts. First of all, if we put ourselves in the presence of the ones we love and we work at loving them, We tend to appreciate them more and more. And the same goes for God. If you long for joy before the Lord, the only type of joy that can endure in so many difficult and sometimes nasty things in this world, then you have to choose to spend time and effort to love God. It would be as though a husband and wife got married and didn't ever spend any time with each other. Their love for each other would it would be very, very difficult, near impossible, for their love for each other to grow. Even if that time is spent writing letters because they live far apart. They're spending time with each other. The same goes for us and God. If we don't spend time with him, our love for him is not nearly as vibrant and can't be because we don't put ourselves in his presence. We don't come to him and spend time with him. This means that prayer is essential to having joy. In fact, this is what so many people say about the saints. And we read the testimonies 
of saints, the reason that their lives are so attractive and that they drew so many people, especially, we can think even recently of Mother, Blessed, well now, Saint Teresa of Calcutta, that the reason that her life was so attractive and so many people went to see her, so many people flocked to her, even though she had nothing worldly to offer, was because of the joy that she had from knowing the Savior. And even now we know that that joy, there was a, quite a bit of darkness in her life, her spiritual life. She felt very far from the Lord. But because she went to him every day in prayer, she was able to experience that joy. And it was an un, sort of an unconscious. She didn't choose, to, I'm just going to be joyful and that's, it's, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm just going to kind of will it. No, it was something that came from being close to the Lord. The second thing to remember is that sorrow is the flip side of joy. Joy is being in the presence of the one we love or seeing good things uh, given to the one we love. But sorrow is the flip side of that, the recognition that there's an absence of the one whom we love or that the one whom we love is, is something bad or negative has happened to them. So we have to remember a couple things. First of all, that Sorrow means that there's someone there whom we love. There's someone there whom we love. And that's a great gift. That's a very good thing. We shouldn't forget that. God always comes to conquer over these obstacles that are placed in the way of having joy. Not often by removing them, not by removing the cause of sorrow, but drawing us to a greater and eternal love that surpasses the cause of our sorrow. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who can bring joy where there is great suffering, where there is great difficulty. And so if you're experiencing that sorrow, going to the Lord is just about the only remedy that will really work. I can't think of anything else. If you have any ideas, let me know. So far, I know that uh, chocolate doesn't work and that endless hours of Netflix don't work. All right? Don't ask me how I know that. But if you, if you see with the eyes of faith, which are strengthened by prayer, then you will see that God's love endures all trials. So even in the midst of sorrow, there can be a turning to joy because there is one we love and Jesus Christ is the hope and the reason that we can overcome that sorrow. But we have to go to him. We have to go to him. So we wear the rose vestments today because Jesus Christ, our Savior, is our reason for hope, and he has almost come to us. The purple, the violet, the uh, penitential colors of Advent have almost turned to the white of Christmas. Our challenge from the Lord today is to seek and maintain that joy that he wishes to give us, even as we wait for his coming still.